MMA News. We're here with the world's most dangerous man, Ken Shamrock. You recently did some bodyguard work for 50 Cent. Um, can you tell us a bit about what that was like? Was it standard stuff or did you have some unique experiences? Anything crazy happen? Yeah, you know, and that's funny too because, I mean, it just kind of, I mean, it went crazy when I was there. But really, the, I, I was there because I was brought in um, for a special job. 50 Cent did not bring me in. I was working for 50 Cent for the company that was putting on the show because 50 Cent had an issue with Mayweather and they felt like there might be some complication there because Mayweather was going to have a booth there. And so we were brought in separately from what 50 Cent already had as security. And um, so we were working the perimeters. His guy was right on him. His guy was on him as the bodyguard. But we were working the perimeter of the store. And we would walk him in and out uh, one time was, you know, when he wanted to walk around, we'd walk with him. Uh, we basically worked protection for him, but we weren't hired by his staff. And when this blew up, people were like, oh, he worked for 50%. He said, like, yeah, we were, but we weren't hired by him. And so it's kind of funny how that blew up. Um, but it was a privilege. I met him. He's a good guy. I mean, I, I hear everything about him, but to me, he was respectful. I didn't have any problems with him. Um, I'm sure he didn't appreciate the people running around saying I was his bodyguard. And, you know, uh, yeah, obviously that's not how I wanted it to happen. But, you know, pe you know, people will say and do what they want to do. I was there as a bodyguard for 50 Cent. We were not hired by him. Uh, I so long want to clear that up, but um, it was a good time. He's uh, not a bad guy, and uh, I really enjoyed him, being around him, and everybody that was with him were very respectful and good people. Cool. Um, you said that you and Dana White had finally buried the hatch in not too long ago. Um, how is your relationship with Dana these days? Uh, as far as I know, we're good. You know, I've, I've reached out to him several times and tried to get involved with them. Um, but, you know, I know they're really busy. they got other things going on. Um, and so I respect that. You know, they have their, 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 their direction that they're going, and I'm not a part of that direction, which is fine. i got no problem with that. Um, you know, they're busy. They're doing very good for themselves, uh, and they don't need me, which is fine. So uh, I know Scott Coke reached out to me. Uh, he said he had something that he would like me to get involved with, with Bellator. I was already supporting Tito um, and on his fight. I was going to be here anyways because uh, I want to see him win. Uh, I'd like to see him get his revenge. Um, and so uh, Scott, has, when, I, when I realized what Scott had done, I was like, man, that's just genius. I mean, he's reached out to Boys Gracie. He's reached out to Randy Couture. I mean, obviously Tito's here. He's big time legend, really did a lot for the sport. I just see so many legends here, so many guys here that Scott Coker reached out to and said, hey, we would love for you to be a part of this. And I thought to myself, why is it taking so long for for legends, the guys who helped build the sport, who put their blood, sweat, and tears in the ring and all the fans that supported them, how come they haven't been a part of trying to support these young fighters coming up, bringing them in, doing interviews, and making them part of this party um, that these young fighters are starting to come up and fight in and giving the support for them because we've already been there and done that. And, you know, we have an insight on what's happening and, and, and you know, even breaking down fighters' uh, experiences. One guy has this, one guy has that. Because we had the education for that. But it just seems like Scott's the only one that has really said, you know what? These guys are all sitting out there. UFC's not using them. Nobody else is using them. I'll use them. And once he did that, I don't think there's a doubt in anybody's mind what this has been up to this point has been a buzz. It has been a buzz. Social media has gone through the roof because I was under the roof in the same signing place as Hoist Gracie. Uh, me and Tito were buried the hatchet. Um, I'm supporting Tito. I mean, all it was was because he, Scott reached out and said, you know what, let's bring in some of these legends who help build the sport. And now you see a huge social media boost for what's going on with Bellator. Why has it taken this long to do that? I mean, we've definitely earned the right to be a part of this. Oh, yeah. Um, have we seen the last of Ken Shamrock fighting in MMA? Or do you have more matches ahead of you, Phil? Well, I will never say, I, and I, I've made this many times, I'll, I, I just don't like to say the word retirement. Uh, you know, it's not something I like to use, not to say as I haven't slipped at times. But I just don't like it because the way I grew up was that the only the reason why I'm standing here today was because I didn't have the word quit in me. I didn't have the word of like I'm done in me. 
And the reason why I was successful in a lot of fights was because I didn't have that in me either. I would never give up. And for me to say those words, and it's not that way with everybody, it's just because of the way I was brought up, um, that I'll, I, I just won't ever say that I'm done. And not until I'm dead because there's always an opportunity somewhere. And if the opportunity is, is the right one, then, then, you know, who knows? But again, like I said, I'm never going to take away those options for myself. Um, on the internet, you've, you, you teased some interest in returning to pro wrestling, um, more specifically WWE. Are there any truths to the rumors that you want to get back in, like, WWE? No, of course I want to get back. Uh, there's, un there's unfinished business there. I really felt like I earned a, earned a lot in uh, getting a really a good, having a program to, to run for the WWF title. Uh, I believe that Rock went ahead of me. Um, and and we had great matches for the Intercontinental uh, title, and he, and he went from that up to to challenge for the, the WWF title and ended up getting it. I really believed I was next in line. Um, I did everything I needed to do. We, we had the fan base, we had the following, uh, people expected it, and then it was just cut off. Um, and so it was unfinished business. So when people ask me, hey, do you want to go back? I said, absolutely. I would love to go back because I felt like uh, it would be great to be able to have a run at that again. Uh, but for whatever reason, and I've asked, is there a reason why you've brought other people back and why that I have not been brought back? And if there is a reason, you know, can you, you know, at least tell me so at least I can walk away and understand why? Because I really felt like I earned that right and um, I've heard nothing. Nobody said anything to me. So it is what it is, man. Just move forward. How was Vince McMahon? How did he treat you? What was his relationship with the mic? It was rough at times, you know. I mean, uh, Vince is a businessman, and there were times where I felt like I was missing my family, and like I was spending a lot of time on the road, and I felt like, uh, and I ended up getting a divorce, uh, I, I, and I was trying to save it, and and uh, and, and uh, Vince didn't want like the idea that I wanted out of my contract, and because I really felt like my family was suffering. And so I, I ended up being able to, to go. Vince let me out of my contract to be able to go home. Um, but I don't know if that's the reason. And if it is, I think there should be an understanding, man. I had to save my family. Now, if that's the reason, I don't know. That's what I'm saying. I just want to know what the reason is and why you know they brought other people back who didn't have the, the success that I did. But yet those guys are coming back. And yet yeah, I don't have an excuse why. Um, and maybe they won't give me one. If that's the case, then I'm OK with that, too. Uh, do, you, do you have any, like, uh, I used to see, like, WWE Hall of Fame for you. That would be a great <laughs> fit right there, man. Yeah, I, I don't think that's going to happen. Like no? I said, there's a reason why they're not talking to me. Okay. Uh, there's something there, um, and I believe it, you know, starts with Hunter. I believe oh, there's okay. an issue there somewhere. Uh, and um, if that's the case, I, being in the Hall of Fame will not happen. <laughs> will not happen. That's one of the questions I wanted to ask was, was there something that happened between you and Triple H, or what? Like, could you elaborate on that at all? The only thing I know of is, is like when he came back, Vince, Vince, uh, he 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 had to do jobs, and I was one of the guys that he had to, to put over. Uh, and I wasn't young coming in, and I know he didn't like it, and uh, I tried to make him feel like, hey, listen, I know I'm young here, and I I, I appreciate you doing this for me, but he he had an ego about it, an attitude about it. And I was like, you know, there's nothing I could do about it. I mean, I'm being told, I'm being told what to do, also. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, he treated some. I'm not going to get into details, but he he really was he's ribbing somebody pretty hard, and I ended up stepping in and telling him, you know, that's not cool. Yeah. And um, so I don't know if these are the reasons. I don't know because no one will tell me. It may even be with Vince. I don't know because I got out of my contract. I don't know the reasons, but I know there's two of them that can be there. One of them is because I got out of my contract, and the other one be because of you know Hunter's running the business now, and we didn't get along so well. Yeah. At least I don't think. I thought I was okay, but you know. He seems to drop the hatch with a lot of people. So hopefully it happens with you and you get back there. Well, it's, you know, you're looking at it. It's not a, it's for me. Anytime you put personal things in the way of business, yeah. you're not going to be successful. Correct. You need to put the personal things aside and, and think about business and think about what the fans want. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, how about this? Uh, what about TNA? Would you go to TNA? A lot of the King Mo does some stuff with TNA. Uh, Tito's done some stuff with TNA. Is that an open door for you? Oh, absolutely. I'm like I said, I'm 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 open to, to you know doing things. I, let's say I'm a free agent. I, I love entertainment, always have, and uh, I'm always open to you know discussions. I'm not going to go somewhere just to go there though. You know, I mean, it's got to make sense to me. Yeah. 
um, you were recently part of a very emotional documentary about your brother Frank Shamrock. Did you see the finished product? And if so, what were your thoughts on it? I did. I seen the finished product, and I thought it was very good. It was very real. Uh, I thought my brother um, stepped out and really exposed himself uh, to his his ups and downs in his life, and I I, I really appreciated that. I I did. I, he took a big chance on that, and uh, he I think he got he got what he needed out of that, and he got some closure. Uh, and I'm happy for him, and I was really happy to be a part of it after that. But when I first started and heard about it, I was a little bit concerned because we weren't seen in a good light. You know, us, us both weren't really that happy with each other. Things that he had done to my dad, and I'm sure that he feels bad. Well, I know he feels bad about it now. Um, but we were able to let those things go, and I'm very happy with the way that it turned out. Um, speaking of Frank, it's been talked about for ages. And you even alluded to it in the documentary. Will we see Shamrock or Shamrock fight one day? Or has that ship just sailed? Yeah, that's not going to happen. No. Um, you know, we're in a different place, different time now. We put, we've kind of buried that hatchet. Um, and uh, it, that, that's not going to happen. If you see us together, it'll be in a business venture. Yeah. And uh, where do you see the MMA industry going like five years from now? What do you predict? Well, I'll tell you right now, I'm very excited that I can actually say this, but I've always thought the next step for MMA and for it to be successful would be to have somebody to be able to compete with the UFC. And I'm not saying that in a bad way because I think that's good for MMA. I think it adds excitement for fans to be able to compare organizations against the other. And then it also adds the excitement of, of fighters being able to have an opportunity to negotiate prices for themselves and not have to be stuck on what someone gives you. And if you don't feel it's fair you have no negotiating power so you take it or you leave it and I think that this this right here even the UFC should see this as being a very very good thing for MMA because it's gonna spike ratings for everybody yeah and uh, here's a question for you like the last one because Ken's got to get up there and start signing okay so no problem last question. Okay. Um, like uh, did you hear the Floyd Mayweather was talking about coming in the industry and offering big money what's your opinion on that well, I mean, anybody can come in here and try and offer big money. We've seen it happen before where people come in and start throwing money around. Uh, affliction comes to mind yeah. where you see money being thrown around. The bottom line is this. You either have a good business plan or you don't have a good business plan. And you got to be smart in MMA because I've seen them swallow up many billionaires. Guys that come in and say, i got money and we can build this. And the next thing you know, they're bankrupt. This business is a different monster, and you have to have the right personality and the right business plan to make it work. So if he steps into it, he can't step into it and think he can just throw money at it because it'll just eat his money up.